Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. We are on a Monday. It is not Wednesday. You are not, you know, way further in the week than you should be or anything else like that. We are here for a special day to join our designer spotlight of the month so that we can make sure that we were able to chat with her um, and, you know, still have time for the holidays. It is totally last minute gift making, gift buying. Here we go. We're trying to get all of it in. I don't know about you, but I start making things and then I finish and I think I'm all done and like I have everything. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, well, I still have two days left. I could totally make enter item for so-and-so before the holidays. And then, you know, here I am the last day driving to somebody's house on Christmas Eve or Christmas day, trying to finish weaving in my ends and things like that, but it's all fun. It's all great. Um, Thank you guys so much for joining us today. See, Julia is here. She's already commenting. It is great to see you today. So glad that you guys could find us today and still join us. It's so exciting. Before we bring in our guests, there's just a couple things that I want to remind you guys about or share about as we're talking about these last minute gifts. Don't forget our wonderful Notions dishes. We're coming down to the last few of these. It's by Sugar Bee Pottery. We uh, tag teamed up with her and it's got these cute little sheep on it. Um, it is made as a notions dish. So you could put like your stitch markers in it, your darning needle or whatever, and then put it like on the table next to you. But they also make a really great like jewelry dish that you could put maybe in your bathroom or at your kitchen sink or something like that to keep things in or just on your desk for some paper clips. But the sheep are super, super cute. You're only gonna get this one through us because it is our teal color, so exclusive to us. Uh, but her sheep design is definitely something if you're interested in that. She's got a lot of other sheep things in her Etsy shop. Um, right there is the link to get the Notions dish if you wanna grab one of those. Another great last minute idea, don't forget your 2024 calendar. Um, January will be here very soon. Uh, we've got some really uh, beautiful yarn shots along with the month. We put in a bunch of the holidays that are in there. Um, our, my director of the yarn division, she actually took images from the calendar and framed them and they're hanging on her wall. It looks so great. So that is totally an option. Um, oh, Julia. Oh. Julia says, I'm not a last minute gifter. I start in January to make my gifts for everybody on my list. You're smart. I don't. I wait until July and then I start about things and I still can't get it done in time, but you know. Um, and the last thing I wanted to share with you guys with a collaboration was our Elevation Yarn bags. She makes these beautiful canvas tote bags. These are exclusive to us with our teal color and our brand coloring and our... Um, well, it's a custom fabric just for us. Uh, you can use it as a bag or you can turn it into a backpack. And it's just a really great project bag. We have it in two different sizes. This is the smaller size. And then we have a slightly larger size. And again, some really great gifting ideas if you are interested. I should also remind you that shipping is coming to not an end because it's not ending, but um, deadlines are coming. You have until the 20th to be able to get some shipping and then it starts to go down there and you've got to pay for the expedited and things like that. But you can find that all on our website. So yeah. Okay. I think that's everything I want to talk about before our guest comes on. Hi, Leah. Merry Christmas. Um, evening, Margaret. Um, great to have you here. Hi, Dawn. It is great to see you guys as well. I'm going to bring in our guest because why not? We are so ready to talk to her. Today, we have our December designer feature or spotlight. We have Janine. Hi, Janine. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. So Janine is from Knits and Knots. Um, we're going to put in a link to her page on our website. On that page, you're going to find all of the patterns that she has available on our website, but that's not all she has. She has a ton more. So when you go to that page, there's going to be a banner at the top. In that banner, you're going to see links to Janine's website, to her Instagram, to Facebook, I think. I don't know. I can't remember what all the buttons are, but you can go ahead and click there so you can find Janine in all of the places and you can start following her, signing up for her email newsletter because you don't want to miss out. Like, I love Janine's patterns. I've been following Janine for a long time since before I was even in this position. And so it is so wonderful when I get to chat with her. Like, I'm so excited. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that you followed me and knew who I was before working with Microchet. That's very cool. <laughs> Sometimes I get like, um, not imposter syndrome, but like, 
you know, like fa I fangirl because a lot of the people that I now get to kind of work with and communicate with, I've been following for years and years and years. And it's always <laughs> just been, I'm one of the people that like likes things and whatever. And then I get to talk to people and it's like so exciting to kind of make that connection and be like, oh, now I get to talk to you. <laughs> I totally know that feeling. I have designers that I, you know, admire and have followed for years. And it's like our version of celebrities, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. right. And I think it's like, I don't know, for me personally, I wouldn't really even care probably if I met like a movie star or something. But when I meet like a knit and crochet designer, I'm like, oh my God, like, I don't even know what to say. Like, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> it's just totally, it's so funny, but I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, Dawn <laughs> is saying hello to you. And Margaret is saying, ooh, I love her patterns. Yes, they're Aww. wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> we love them too. We're honored to be able to have her kind of finish up our year here with our designer spotlights. Um, why don't we kind of start from the very beginning? Well, maybe not the beginning, but tell us a little bit about how you got started as a designer. Sure. Uh, well, I guess my start in the fiber arts happened when I was in university. I was studying food science and I just, I don't know, I since I did well in school, usually, I, I think it was just in my head to follow science or, you know, go to business, go to science, all these things. And I just was not feeling it. And I was doing okay in school and stuff, but it just felt like something was missing. And then one year, my mom gifted me a round knitting loom. You know, those, they're like plastic circles with pegs on them. And you just lift, you know, you wrap the yarn around the pegs and you lift them over. And I made a million hats and filled our apartment with more hats than we could ever wear. And my boyfriend was like, why don't you try selling some of these? Because you probably don't need 200 hats for yourself. I was like, you're probably right. And so I started an Etsy shop and sold, you know, the same hat just in a bunch of different colors. Because I would just buy, you know, a bunch of different yarns and make the same hat. And eventually people beyond my friends and family started purchasing them on Etsy. I still remember the first cha-ching I heard. And I was just like so confused because I hadn't planned this with any of my friends or anything. I was like, what was that sound? And then someone who I didn't know bought something from me and it was the coolest moment. And yeah, so then I just started doing markets after that and selling more on Etsy and on a website. And then people on Instagram started following me who weren't necessarily interested in purchasing finished things, but they did the same thing that I did. And I found this whole community and started talking to other people who did the same thing as me, markets and everything. And then people started asking for the patterns and I didn't even know what that meant. I didn't know what a pattern was. I, I just had no clue. And I remember when I started researching what that meant, I was like, oh, and this just like light bulb went off. And so I tried it. And my first few patterns sucked because that's just how it is when you start something new and that's fine. And now I've gone back and, you know, fixed them up a little bit. So they're good now. But at first, yeah, they're, you know, all my garments had one size only because I didn't know how to grade anything. I didn't even know that grading was a thing. Um, right. Yeah. So, so that's kind of the transition. People just started asking for the pattern. So then I just figured it out uh, along the way and started posting the patterns in my Etsy shop too. Okay. And, uh, yeah, circling back to what I was starting to say about school was that I learned how to knit and crochet while I was in school and my interest just went straight to that. <laughs> I did finish school, so we we managed that, but my interest was really more in like the markets and the Etsy and and I thought, okay, I'm at a crossroads right now where I could pursue more education or work in my field that I'm really, my heart's not in it, or right. I could try to make this work, which seemed crazy, but also if it was going to work, it was going to be at that time when I'm living at home. I have no expenses, like right. the time to try it. And I tried it and it worked. I mean, not immediately. It took a long time, but yeah. So here, yeah. and then here we are. And then, and then I, I was just gonna say, then I stopped selling finished things and now now right. I do full time. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. I love that, you know, your story and how you share about that. Like you went to school for something and then you're like, I'm not really passionate about this. Because I think too, for a lot of younger people, that is a big thing. I know like when I went to college, I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Like, you know, the major majors that they have and you kind of pick something and you just do it because 
Sometimes you're still confused about what you want to do or you don't know what you want to do. But a lot of times, like, or maybe it was just when we went to school, like, or when I was going to school, I didn't even know half of these opportunities existed, oh, like, yes. <laughs> in all these different industries that you could do things and you could find your passion and you could turn it into a business. I mean, I, I guess this is dating me, but, like, I remember when Etsy first started and it was like, oh, my gosh, what is Etsy? How do you make Etsy work? And all of those things. And it's just, like, spiraled. And I love, love, love getting to see these designers that come out and kind of your journey. And we're grateful that you made it this far with us because we love your patterns and we're so happy to have them to make. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, even when I was in university or even finishing up high school, I, there was this, I don't know, I kind of felt like the expectation was if you want to be respected, you go to university, you know, mm -hmm. which it, it's just not true. And no. so I don't know if maybe I followed that path because I just felt like that's what I should do. And right. I don't know, maybe just getting older or, or trying that and realizing it's wrong made me just do what I wanted to do instead and right. figure it out. Right. No, I yeah. love it. And we should say, too, that if you don't know, maybe you don't know Janine yet, um, but she does design for both knit and crochet. So you have an opportunity if you love both crafts or if you love just one of them, you can follow along with her and see a lot of wonderful things like the sweater she's wearing, like this beautiful <laughs> sweater cardigan here um, that we're going to talk about. So as we kind of keep talking, if you do have any questions, you can throw them in the chat. We will try to chat about them while we're live and everything. Or if not, we'll answer them afterwards we'll be sure to follow up on those. So, okay. So once you started designing and everything else, I mean, I, it seems like you got like the designer bug and it's just kind of spiraled mm -hmm. from there and it's been really great, but you then started to do some publishing of patterns outside of just yourself. And I just have to share, this is one of Janine's books that we did that we still have available. Um, it's called Cool Crochet for Warm Days. And it is a beautiful collection of patterns in here. There's some garments in here. There's some beautiful shawls in here. Oh my God, they're so, so fabulous. Um, tell you. us a little bit about that. Like it can be about this book or about other books. We yeah. also have this book to share and talk about modern crochet <laughs> sweaters. One of my favorites. I have so many like pages bookmarked like to make projects and stuff so i'm trying to like one at a time <laughs> one at a time um but tell us a little bit about that i mean like becoming an author in from a book perspective is different than being just no, i shouldn't say just it's different than being a designer who self-publishes so mm -hmm. what kind of just made you decide to go into some book publishing too um well thank you the first thing that came out was that, yeah, that magazine style publication with you guys. And that was really exciting to me because I had never done anything like that before. And I had also never um, signed on to do more than one pattern at a time like that. Like I remember I, I, I got a call, like a design submission call because I signed up for the emails or I can't remember how that, how that works, but I got a, you know, offer to, come up with an idea and then I submitted like, I don't know, 10 things. <laughs> Cause I was yeah. like, I just want them to pick one of mine. So I was like, if I do 10, there's a better chance to like one of them. Right. And then the, whoever I was corresponding with was like, would you be interested in doing like a full collection of five of these? And I just like, could not believe it. I couldn't believe that you chose me. It was the biggest deal. And uh, yeah, so that really challenged me creatively because I wanted them to be worth it. I didn't want them to just be patterns that like, oh, what can I make the quickest and, and throw into this book? So I really, I really spent a lot of time on that. And it was my first time, a lot of the elements in there, like the safari maxi dress, like a lot of these things were new to me and I learned a lot doing it. And I, and yeah, I, I feel like I really pushed myself and came out with some good stuff. Yeah. And yeah, I love that. I 100% agree. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, photography is not my strongest suit. So I had a really amazing photographer also from Winnipeg help me photograph everything. And it just turned out really awesome. Uh, the yeah. photo, those are some of my favorite photos that we've that I've ever taken of my <laughs> work before. I mean, like, look at these photos. They are gorgeous. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I, yeah, no, I, 
those beach yeah. photos were taken like before the, it was not summer yet. It was very cold out. And uh, so they, it looks like a beautiful beach scene. I don't think there was even water in the lake there. We were just like, no. oh, this chilly beach, but it, but they that look is, good. <laughs> they look gorgeous. They yeah. are just absolutely Thank phenomenal. Um, I mean, this book is just stunning too. I mean, yes, I know we published it and everything else, but I wasn't here when it happened. So I'm speaking objectively. Um, I love this book though, too, because, you know, the whole front half is just gorgeous photos of all the projects. And then you get into the pattern. I, there's just not one in here you can't like. I mean, they're all just phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal pieces. And then, you know, you went on to publish like a full size book with that how many garments are in here? 20, pat, 20 yeah. garments. They're not yeah. even, well, I guess there's one or two that aren't quite a sweater. They're like a. Yeah, shawl. one is a capelet. And yeah, there, yeah. There, there might be something else like that in there. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, so what kind of, how did that work? I mean, this is just so stunning that you made all of these projects in a book. Like how long did this take you to put together? Thank you. That's so nice. Um, so this was at the beginning of, yes, that's the, I love that one. That That's one of the projects that is, you know, it's on the simpler side. It's not as like, you could make that in a day or two or whatever. And, uh, but the photography, like I use the same photographer as the first collection that we were just looking at. And okay. she just, she just knocked it out of the park. Like something so simple. She made it look so elegant and so, yeah, yeah just awesome. They're just stunning, stunning <laughs> photography. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. anyway. I love that Sorry, one. I keep cutting you off because I'm looking That's at the okay. pictures. And they're you beautiful. can cut me off to compliment me anytime. That is okay <laughs> with me. <laughs> but um, the book came about at a weird time because we were living in Alberta at the time um, for my partner's work. And it was just when COVID hit and he lost his job. So we were in this weird place of not knowing if we should move back to Winnipeg back home or if we should stay out there for future opportunities that might come up. We didn't know what COVID was gonna be. Right. We ended up moving back home. We lived in my partner's parents' basement for several months, which was fun, while we figured yeah. out where are we going to live? What are we going to do? We had to have two big dogs. It made renting really difficult. So yes. long story short, we ended up buying a house, which is this house, which is wonderful. But during all that chaos where we were living in a basement, my stuff was all in boxes. Like mm -hmm. It was just the most chaotic time in my life. Um, I, I wasn't on top of my emails at that time. And I remember I, I got this, like, it was like a follow-up to a follow-up to a follow-up email. And I'm like, oh, what is this? I thought it was spam. I, I never opened it. And then I opened it and I was like, these people are so persistent. And it was a book offer, like an actual book offer. And then when I researched the company, I was like, oh my gosh, this is an actual like crafting, knitting, crochet, right. art book company. This is what they do. And so I responded immediately and I was like, I'm so sorry. Like it's been, it's been a little chaotic. And we had a conference call about um, a potential book and we kind of came up with a theme. And I thought at that time, sweaters was where I was really finding that people were, uh, so pe people were gravitating towards me about, I felt, I felt like people liked my sweaters the most. And yeah. the, we had an option, like, should it be knit or crochet? And I felt like, my crochet audience was a lot bigger than knit. So, okay, it's going to be crochet sweaters. And then uh, they were like, okay, before we sign the contract, let's come up with um, a chapter summary and maybe like uh, some pattern names and pattern ideas that would go in those chapters. So that was really fun for me. And yeah, and then, uh, so, so then I had about six months uh, to write the whole book, which is to Whoa. make all of those 20 things, grade them all and format them all, have tech editors run through them, make edits. Like that was a lot. Um, wow. That's and then a I, lot. It is a lot. I don't know how I did it, but sometimes when you have deadlines and you just don't have a choice, like you, you right. surprise yourself with what, with your, right. with what you're able to do. And it was funny because at that time I still had contract work like monthly patterns that I had to come out with so I was doing that at the same time as well and yeah it was it was a lot but somehow I pulled it off and yeah we we booked the photo shoots I think we had three or four and we did them throughout those six months and then 
um, we had a little bit of time afterwards that we could shoot too, but it was funny because I would have a shoot in like November where I still have four sweaters left to make in the next month. And then I'd book another shoot for the end of December. And it'd be like the morning I finished that sweater was like right when we're photographing it. It was, it was tight, but it all worked out somehow. <laughs> That is crazy. I never knew yeah. that. That is pretty awesome. That is, makes this even like a bigger accomplishment from like your perspective and stuff. I mean, <laughs> get a book done with 20 patterns in six months. I mean, that yeah. is crazy. That is yeah. crazy amazing. Like, Thank not you. Like, a crazy person. Well, maybe a little <laughs> bit, but it's crazy Thank amazing. You. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, sorry, I was just going to add one thing. Um, since after submitting it in, I don't know, January or wh whenever the deadline was, I really wanted to make sure that, okay, I wrote a lot of stuff in a short time. Like I need to make sure I didn't overlook anything or make any mistakes. So I sent them to several tech editors, like the full book, as well as formatting them. Like I sell all of those patterns myself too. Mm -hmm. so they're on my Ravelry shop, Etsy shop. Some of them are on your We Crochet website yeah. also. And so I formatted them into PDF versions and then I had 500 people um, help test these patterns. Like literally wow. there were over 500 people because I tried to have like 30 people per pattern to make sure I had like at least three or whatever people per right. size. And yeah, so then the rest of the next six months was just like a really intense testing phase and a lot of planning and a lot of forms to create for like yeah. their feedback for 20 different patterns. It was crazy. and. Yeah. So I, I just, as soon as we were saying like, oh, I wrote this book so fast, I had to throw that in there. So it. Yes. No, we're good. Especially done, everybody. It has been tech edited. It has been reviewed. We've yeah. done patterns. We know it's a wonderful book. Um, but yeah, it's just amazing. Like you th just thinking about the process of, you know, thinking of something and making it and all the different mm -hmm. pieces. It's just crazy. And we know that when it comes to print books and using a company, things definitely go slower than if you're published self publishing, like it's just a different time period and everything else. Um, I do want to say if you are interested in this book, we put a link into the chat here. Uh, so you can see it'll also be down in the description box then too. You can grab this from our site. There are a handful of patterns in here that do use our yarn. So you could go ahead and grab them at the same time. Um, I was showing you, <clears throat> excuse me, the one that Janine is wearing now. This is called the Timber Lodge Striped Pullover. Um, this one was done in our Paragon sport yarn, which we no longer have available, but a good alternative if you want to make would be our Galileo sport. Um, it's going to give the same twist. It's just a slightly <laughs> different um, makeup of like the fiber content is slightly different, but you're going to get the same drape. You're going to get the same look from it. And also that wonderful... I don't know. Did you call it a shawl or a stole? Or I guess it's not a stole. Um, uh, the, a cape. The cape. Yes. <laughs> the faux fur capelet. This is using our fable fur. It is. Oh my gosh! Like when you make it, you're never going to take it off because it is mm -hmm. so soft and cozy. It is perfect for this time of the year. And you know, it's real. It's I don't, not simple, but it'll work up quickly because you're just kind of going back and forth. So really great options in here. This is totally worth picking up, whether you get it from us or you get it somewhere else. This is a book you want to have. I guarantee you're going to find at least five to 20 patterns in here that you mm -hmm. absolutely love. I mean, I know I have, so I'm sure you all will too. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Speaking of patterns, we would be remiss if we don't talk about the brand new pattern that you just came out with not too long ago. So as part of our designer spotlight, we asked Janine to make a wonderful new pattern to go along with our yarn of the month sale. If you don't know, our yarn of the month this month is our gloss, which comes in a DK and a fingering version. So our fingering comes in a hank, the DK comes in a cake, and Janine did not disappoint. She came out with a beautiful, beautiful cowl that you can find on our website and also on all of um, Janine's spots. Do you want to share it with us and what it looks like for those who haven't seen it yet? So I don't know how much detail you can see here, but oh, it looks so like this. So it's a, it's a cowl that uses granny squares, but for this one, instead of putting them side by side in blocks, like you often mm -hmm. in granny square projects, all types of projects, I wanted to put them, just turn them a little bit. And then I created a, like 
I always say half square when I'm referring to these. A triangle is what it is. Um, I call it a half square too because it's half of a square. I mean, yes, technically yeah. it's a triangle, but it's half of a square. Like, yes. Yes. So I, I, <laughs> yeah. So I adapted the square to be a triangle <laughs> to fit in those spaces. And I think it just create it just makes it look a little more interesting. It looks mm -hmm. a little more um combined with the fingering weight yarn. I feel like it just looks like more a more intricate, exciting project. Yeah. And it's I wanted to, since it's December, I wanted to make something that you could make for Christmas or as right. a gift or whatever. Um, despite being fingering weight, since it's such a small scale project, it's, it doesn't take that long to make. And then as the border, I used, I don't know if you can tell, but I used like a slip stitch, uh, border. So it looks kind of like knit stitches and right. yeah, I just love using that for borders. It just looks nice and refined and kind of plays off, you know, the granny square look is a very crochet look. And so I just wanted to add a nice little little refined detail to the edge there and no, i love it because yeah. granny squares are definitely a big thing they've always <laughs> been a big thing they're a big thing right now but you know just the traditional granny square it's great it serves its purpose but i love seeing all the different squares that kind of come out and the different takes on them i love the square that you decided to use for it and then turning it on the angle definitely gives it a different look than just having it a traditional square shape across uh, your piece and everything. So I think it's mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. I know people are, might say, well, but it's kind of holy. Is it going to keep me warm? I, I, I think it is. It well, because it doesn't stay like this when you wear it, you know, it scrunches down, um, can fit in your coat and you can kind of place it. So it's over your face and then it's scrunched right. here and your jacket's done up. I don't think you'll have a problem with it, but no. Yeah. And it's also <laughs> merino wool and silk. So you're going to get the really nice warmth from the merino wool that you have. And it has the luxury to it with the silk content, which just makes it drape so nicely and so, so beautiful. We love it. We are so excited about that new pattern um, and getting to share. Oh, I totally forgot to say that your patterns are 30% off right now over on the We Crochet yeah. website. So you can mm -hmm. go and grab that brand new pattern for 30% off right now so you can grab the pattern you can grab the yarn for 20 percent off um and you can start making and have it done in time for whatever holiday party you might be attending over the next week or so mm -hmm. and i have i'm just looking right now i have quite a few patterns that are listed on we crochet that are 30 percent off so even if the cowl is not something you want to make for a gift there's a few other smaller projects yeah. too that you could get for cheap. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of awesome projects there. Yeah. Um, okay. So speaking about Christmas, that means we're going into the new year. Mm -hmm. And what are you seeing for your future? We know you just, well, I shouldn't say we know. I know. And a lot of your followers know you just had a baby. Are you looking to switch gears? Are we still going to be able to find sweaters from you in the new year? Do you have any insight as to where you're going? <laughs> we can. So um, I actually have a few months of my, like, regular pattern work blocked off in the beginning of the year because I'm working on a second book, which is exciting. No way. Yeah, I decided to let's do everything at once. Let's have a baby, write a book, yes. let's do all of it. And I yeah, I can't do anything the easy way apparently. So yes. yeah, the last little while has been me like, it's so fun with my baby's name is Jack. He's seven and a half months now. And my day is it's, it's a lot, but it's really fun. It's like everything I've ever wanted. I'm able to work from home. He's here. So, yep. so it's pretty funny. I'll be with him. And then when he falls asleep for his nap, I book it to my office. And yeah. then I try to get as much work done as I can until he wakes up. And then we switch gears. Okay, back to mom mode. And then we hang out. And Nate, my partner, I'm lucky, he works from home too. So okay. if I ever have a deadline or like something I really need to do, like now, for example, he yeah. is with the baby and Aww. I can... Yeah, so we're we're figuring it out. There's it's a yeah. lot up in the air, but luckily I have a supportive partner who can help me, and I have a job that's quite flexible. So, but that yeah, awesome. so uh, yeah, this book is going to be like a summer themed book. Mm. Um, I think that's all I can really tell you so far. Okay. But there will be we crochet yarns in it, just like the the other one. So I think it'll have like I think there's going to be four or five patterns that use we crochet yarns. Okay. So as long yeah. as you promise to come back when the book comes out so we can share it, um, yeah. we will be fine with just hearing that it is a summer themed book. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, so that's what I'll be working on most of, well, the first half of this year. Um, and then, yeah, just back to like, so while I was pregnant with Jack and even the, this last, this past year, I feel like I've been choosing more, maybe projects that I can make a little bit quicker or that mm -hmm. don't have as much math in it. Right. Um, and I'm really itching to get back to that actually, because I really enjoy that part of my job. I love Excel spreadsheets with just numbers everywhere. We look like a crazy person. I love that. And I really miss that. So I'm going to try to do more garments in 2024, more than I did um, this year, at least. Yeah. And so no plans to slow down. Not yet. Awesome. Well, we're so excited. <laughs> we totally get it. You get a new baby. Things change. You have they to readjust. Do. You've yeah. got to get yourself from A to B. And then you know what? It all changes again. I mean, I have two boys and I love them dearly, but like literally as soon as I think I have something under control and in a routine, nope, we're changing something else again. And exactly. Yeah. It all we're, out. we're going through that right now. I, I, maybe like a month ago, I was like, okay, I got this. And then there's teething and then there's crawling and it just changes everything. <laughs> yeah. And wait till they only go to one nap a day instead of two naps a day. And then your whole world is like, oh my gosh, how am I getting anything done? I, yeah, I've had a few freak outs like that already, but it's, it's okay. I know, I know going in, having a baby, this is going to happen. It's fine. Yes. Fine. There's always nighttime where I can work. Actually, he teases, he's teething now. So there's really not nighttime where I can work, but yeah. we'll figure it out. That's hard. That's hard. Yeah. A couple months and then you'll be good again. For yeah. A couple months. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Just got to ride the flow, you know, or the rain, oh, yeah. ride wave. Yeah. We're going with it. Yep. <laughs> Lovely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing about yourself, what you're working on, all of the other things that you've been doing um, outside of raising a family now. I mean, that is so exciting. And we're so excited <laughs> to see what you continue to do in 2024. And we'll be here to share it. So don't forget, everybody, if you're not already following Janine on her page that we shared for her designer spotlight, you will find links to all of the places that you can find her. So you can go like and subscribe, sign up for a newsletter, find her website. It's all there. So you can follow along in one easy place. Just start clicking everything and follow along. I know I am. So hopefully I'll see you guys all <laughs> there and commenting. Um, but thank you so much for taking your time to share with us. We can't wait to see what's coming in 2024 and working together. And yeah, have a wonderful Christmas or holidays, um, whichever you celebrate. I'm not quite sure, but hopefully you have a wonderful holiday season. Um, and yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I've had a few of these Facebook chats and I always love it. I love it. Yay. Well, you can come back whenever you want. We're, you're more than welcome. Whatever you want to talk about or you're bringing out, just let us know. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful week. We will not be here next week for the live. It is Christmas week here, and so we're taking off next week, and we will not be here on Wednesday. This was our live for this week, just so everybody knows. We'll see you back in the new year in 2024. How is that possible? I don't know, but we'll see you then. Bye, everyone. <laughs>